was not in our previous forecast. No, after the end of, of last year, that's going in the new forecast. In the new forecast. So the numbers I have from Ms. Brown may not include $25,000 in additional. Correct. But it says non-general fund. Most of that is. Because it's going into the that quasi we hold on the money. Yeah, there's while. an escrow set up, but then there's uh, part of that goes in general fund under the building department. So it really, so the twenty-five thousand dollars is not going to really improve my my deficit. It's just it's only there if we need it, and then it doesn't come out of the general fund. So if we end up with an abandoned building that we have to tear down, there's money. There. So bottom line, it doesn't really help. It's a nice thing. I think it's an amazing thing that we did. It helps keep our city looking good. It helps keep people accountable for their abandoned properties. But it doesn't, it doesn't have the bottom line in the general fund when I'm trying to keep the deficit recurring. Um, explore and evaluate other available collection services. That's probably what the OSS was. Correct. Do we have an estimate as to what revenues would be gained from that? No, I, I can get that. Based I'm on, just trying to find where we're getting the money from. Yeah, the based services. on the CBSC contract. Yeah, if we could figure that out, maybe that'll help me understand where the deficit will be reduced by. Right. Now, I can only assume, I'm sorry, I just keep going with the way I'm saying that. I can only assume that the, with the adoption and implementation of the data replacement plan, I will say that in, if we do fund that through um, whatever revenue stream, I would speculate that we would see a savings there because the cost of maintenance for the current aged fleet would be reduced, and that's been one of my um, main points about how, you know, we bought two new, we were going to lease two new SUVs, we ended up purchasing, but, you know, vehicles were costing us eight, nine thousand dollars a year anyways, and the lease one would have been about the same, why not give them a new instead of the old for the same price? So I will, I would be willing to bet if we forecasted that, we're going to see some savings um, that would help the bottom line in general. When we talk about selling or leasing non-essential city assets to generate cash, um, what, what type of assets are we looking at? I mean, we're leasing, which we must be talking about buildings that the city has. It's, if it's in the plan, then we can go forward and, and do those things as the opportunities come along. Uh, we have strapped out some old vehicles that are collecting rice. Speaking of that, not vehicles, but if you go to the main fire station, have you gone up to their storage room on the second floor? No. They have what I would assume are thousands of dollars worth of scrap of their informal old nozzles, like copper and brass fire extinguishers right. that they don't mm -hmm. use. But all those all those old nozzles are chrome plated brass. The chief said to me probably three or four months ago, I'd love to be able to get rid of these things. What, what's it take to do that? And I don't know if anybody's ever explained, shown you that, but I mean, these things are heavy and they're solid brass. They gotta have some salvage value to them. Plus, they could use the space there for free things. Can, There's uh, a ton of stuff. Yeah, you know, we, we can advertise for bids on a, a per pound basis or per ton basis. That's what it is. I mean, why wouldn't we just take it ourselves to the scrap yard and scrap it? Depending on what we estimate the value of it, we have to take it out. I think the only way to do that probably is to take it somewhere in the way that they can tell you exactly what it is that day. I don't know how somebody else would get on it. I was looking here, this is part of Titan policies on fuel usage and idling time under undetermined savings at this time, second quarter of 2015. Well, we were supposed to do that July 1st of 2014, according to the last plan. It's a, there's a uh, I know the policies that have been refreshed on that are very implemented. There, there's no idling or policies as such that have been either refreshed or implemented since that time. Well, that was supposed to have been done last July. I mean, what do we, we're putting a whole lot of stuff on the sheet, a whole lot of it doesn't really mean. 
do. It doesn't. There's a, well, three things on there that really truly mean anything. Well, I guess it does not make any sense that that's the problem. Oh, uh, you know, others are going to work. Uh, they're going to accept it based on two or three things. All that other stuff's just fluff. 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 We're exactly the same thing. Have we done enough of this now? We want to move on to the budget. Or what do you want to do? What can we do with the budget? I don't know. Well, that's, we'll let the budget finance person tell us. That's not my. I, 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 was just, I was just the chairman of this since we took this as the committee of the whole. Somebody else is going to be taking it over Tuesday if you're still talking. What do you need to when you come back? I'm going to be gone about two weeks from Tuesday. Just about. Maybe. It'll be anywhere from 10, 10 to 14 days. Well, don't think about what's going on back here. Enjoy yourself. I'll call our day. Is that a moment? I do. I call any of this for fun. Here's when it's, when it's about 85 degrees. You got, an, you got an extra space? Uh, I will call. I will call. Diane, I used to always call Mary Beth when I was when I had a beer in my hand and it was about 85. Well, don't call I me. I will. <laughs> Believe me, I will. You see it on the, the, the answer, the, the identity thing, don't answer it. Unless you're going to send the third ticket to another uh, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And he knows I, I I'm not eligible for vacation yet. The word, I don't, is there anywhere to go with this part here anymore? I don't think so. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I have a really hard time supporting this. Like I said, I might not be here. I still think we should push for a month's extension. Because, you know, what if this thing would have been given to us one day before? I mean, you tell me we have to make a decision after I got to I'm sorry. I'm not. Well, I think um, what we need to do then is we close this and transition the financial, uh, close the financial restoration plan discussion and transition in the budget. Um, we're not going to meet again, I'm assuming, until Monday. That's well, awesome. I don't know. You want to meet on this again before Monday? I don't have a day. Do I don't have a day okay. open. We'll Monday, do 6 so. o'clock Monday. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Um, I would say, though, that if any of us have any ideas, get ready to present them because if we're not going to accept this plan. Maybe we should at least be prepared to discuss some options that we'd like to send back. My option to send back would be to go back to the income tax again as it was on the put the electric street lighting in there to be removed also with the tax code and run it again. And let the administration get on board. I don't they were talking about they thought the last one was a loser wasn't gonna go anywhere. Well, for the reasons we've said here, this is just for me. When I look at this stuff with the schools, first of all, I ask, why are we waiting until February of next year if everything is really so important about all this? If we can't even have a month more to talk about it. Why are we waiting until February of next year to do this? That's one. The other, the property tax thing, I don't like at all because we continue to pile this stuff on our people. And whether you like it or not, the street lighting fee is a tax. It is a tax. So that would be seventy-five dollars. You'd be adding to a hundred thousand dollars. The income tax was one point four million. Yeah. What would it turn around? Point six. You know, I kind of agree with Paul on that. I think the income tax is more fair. It hits more citizens. The street lighting is already kind of a property tax in a way. Um, maybe we need to think about tying it to the uh, tax credit reduction and remove the tax credit reduction reduction and bring it back to one percent. You know, people are going to be paying that reduction now, and they're going to be more cognizant of the fact that it's costing a lot of money. If we get rid of that reduction and bring it back to 1%, that's 35% uh, of people that work out outside of the city that would probably support that income tax increase. They're already paying the street lighting fees, so it's not like they're not getting hit. Somehow. Well, we have to adjust the, the uh, percentage. It would be a little less than 1.4, right? but we're only making one of the tax credit reduction. And we were just so you know, I did quick numbers right here at 1.6 million. You can reduce that 1.6 million by the 727 thousand dollars, which is the property tax. That way, you keep the vehicle in place, making the services the program in place. You can reduce it again by 500 thousand dollars, which is the revenue generated by the uh, the tax credit, and you can reduce it by the 300 thousand dollars, which is the street lighting, and you still have a little bit. Those are quick numbers, though. I mean, I don't know. What do you think putting a tax increase at what percentage? Yeah. Whatever, 1.6 million. Oh, okay. 
I think uh, that 1.3, 1.6 million before was based on restoring the tax credit on the full 1.8 percent, but not having it on the extra. Right. So it would be a little right. less. Right. It would have been frozen at the one. <laughs> you know, and it's for Every, for there would have been no credit on the two new two tenths. Right. right. And for yeah, the folks in it. other municipalities, mm -hmm. it would reduce the tax. Yeah. Uh, I would say give the tax. So that's an option. That's an option. You still do everything we're talking about here, you just do it in a different way. I mean, we gained support for the income tax between the last two times. I know it's been on the ballot twice, but we did gain some support. We gained about, what, 6%? More than that, I thought. Three. Yes. Yeah. I was just going to make a suggestion to think about it. if we decide to do that. We should get somebody professional like Todd Lock or somebody like that to run the campaign instead of council trying to do it. I think we would have reached more people, it would have been done more professionally. There are a lot of people that did not understand again what that was all about. So, uh, just a thought, I don't know how much that would cost, but it might be worth it. And, you know, just to bring it up, I will say, you know, the agreement originally was produce that income tax credit with the promise of the mayor's support on the income tax. And she didn't support us on it last time, so why are we keeping that income tax rate up? That's my thought. Why keep it in place? To be honest, I don't know if I can get behind any kind of I'm just, you know, I just feel that, you know, I'm not a big tax guy regardless. <laughs> and I went ahead and put my neck out and did it twice. And the citizens spoke twice. So I don't know. It's a hard pill for me to swallow to say I'm going to get behind any tax initiative a third time. Um, I did it the first two times to really know that the city needs something. But I value the opinion of our citizens to the point where I, I don't know. I, I have to do a lot of thinking to see how I'm working on that. We didn't get the message out. That, that was the biggest problem. And, and I had somebody tell me this, and I hadn't thought about it before, but some citizens have. The fact that all city employees have to pay city income tax. Very few of them have to pay property tax because they don't live in the city. And that is a pill that's hard to swallow for some citizens. I had never even thought about it. That's a question I have. It could for Ken. It could be flaunt and I had this all day. How many people live outside the city of Mass in the Bay City, work in Mass in the Bay City in the tax? I mean, we know we know there was something close to thirty five percent of the people that live in the city work other places. And, base, and don't pay city income tax, we give them a credit. I think it was 35 percent. Yes. Okay, was what we talked Somewhere between 30 and 35. What percent of the people paying the city income tax that work in Mass and live outside of the city? I'd have, <clears throat> I'll have to find a way to uh, get it. I'm sure we can get it, but I, you know, I, I don't yeah. expect you to have it in pocket there. You know, I, I started on a project like that uh, not so long ago called Canton <clears throat> and said, in your tax software, tell me how many people reside in Canton who work in Mass. Because our system can do that with Mass and residents. They can't do that with the, the software. That yeah, and that's can. probably where a lot of our folks go. So we should figure out who lives in Mass and who works in Mass. Outside. Yeah. Well, well, you can figure out who works in Masson but lives out We can figure out how many schedules are filed by Masson residents who work outside the city limits. Can you find out how many schedules by Masson residents work out work inside Masson? I mean, people living outside the work. No, yeah. so my like, thought is that they live here and work here, and we have that number, and, and we have the other number, and, 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 and the remainder. Work yeah, I know we have a, a total schedule from Maslin employers. I'll have to do some. I mean, you gave me the biggest employers and all that stuff. Yeah. Like top 25 and all that. But this is, you know, we're back to where I'm, I don't know. We're putting it all on the homeowner in Maslin. Even like the condominium owners. They're mad at us because we put a $25 street light fee on them when they already have street lights. Those people are mad at us. Um, and we have the people that are working outside the city that are mad at us because we reduced the tax credit. Well, that's still back to 
also the number I'd like to know, I'd like to know two numbers. How many people live outside of Mass and pay city income tax? We're here to pay city income tax. How many of our total employees that we're paying out of the general fund work in all branches of the government in the city? Administration, council, courts, everything that we're paying out of the general fund. How many of those people live in Mass and how many live outside of Mass? like to have those. I don't know it, but is it possible by Monday <laughs> or sooner? I mean, you know, we're putting us in the box. We're asking numbers, you know, and I know you're thinking, man, that's short of time, but I mean, that's the position we're in, too. And, uh, we're not being given much time to talk about this. It still bothers me that our residents, uh, whether they're retired or not retired, you're going to have retirees, a lot of the older neighborhoods of the town are going to be complaining about paying more property tax. And you're also going to have the, a lot of people that are a little more fluent in Mass and that have very high property values that are going to be getting pretty, hit pretty hard on this thing, too. That's where all, a lot of the money's going to come from. So, um, where will that put us in the county based on this? So where will that raise mass? And if we raise the property tax 1.5 mil, where will that put us compared to the rest of the areas? I would have to probably be done that by the county or look at the effect of mill. Because I remember last time we were debating this, it was quite high. They had a before I was driving a phone call in the morning and had it sent out. <laughs> yeah, there you are. We are comparable with many of the townships that surround us currently. Um, so as we increase, and I say comparable because Mr. Coe will be quick to let us know the effective rate can, can kind of screw things up a little bit. But I feel that we're a little bit, we're starting to push that out a little bit. Um, it's our schools have had to, in order to, and they've done that in order to support themselves for whatever reasons. I As we get that information, we'll send it out. Okay. And if I get it, I'll get it to Diane.